guess what? When all hell starts breaking loose, rather than us just getting stressed out about it, we got to start understanding that the greater one lives in us and that we got to understand that when all hell breaks out, we got to start breaking out against all hell. And that's our assignment. Is not to be coward, not to be intimidated, and not to let the enemy take your peace. You will not take my peace. You will not take my positioning of victory. You will not take the seed of the word that lives inside of me. Remember, against the seed. The enemy wants to come at the seed of the word that's inside of you. The seed of the word of God wants to talk you out of it, wants to get you in doubt, wants to get you in fear, wants to get you playing head games and mind games and wondering and worrying and trying to figure out. Let me tell you something. You're not going to figure God out. We've been pastoring 35 years. People come to us and go, Pastor, what is this and how, why is this? And you know what we do? We go, I don't know. <laughs> Great pastoral wisdom, right? I don't know. I'm going to ask God about that, okay? No, I don't. Guess what? There's things that we are not ever going to know until we get there. So don't let the enemy rob your peace. Why am I saying this? It's just like when God said, I'm up to something. Because when you spend all your time and energy trying to figure out stuff that you're never going to figure out, you're never going to have peace. And the enemy will keep you focused on something else that doesn't matter and keep you stagnated and moving forward for things that do. The enemy will try to rob your peace. He'll try to take the seed of the word out of you. The second thing is he'll try to rob your prosperity. It was the Amalekites that came down and robbed the threshing floors of, in the days of Gideon. The Amalekites that came and, and stole David's flocks and wives and children and, and everything at Ziklag in 1 Samuel chapter 30. It was the Amalekites. They were plunderers. They were robbers. And they stole from him and they stole his blessing. They stole his prosperity. I remember um, we were at one of the business empowered meetings with, with Mel, Mel and Mona Ponder a number of years ago. And, um, and there was a couple there that Dur you know, we went through a really tough economic downturn here starting in 2007. A lot of people lost jobs and lands and et cetera. If you weren't here during that time, you may not understand how bad it got here. But at one point, we, we pretty much determined that about 70% of our church had lost their jobs. I mean, it was, pretty, it was pretty tough. It was pretty tough during that time. And, but this one couple that comes to Business Empowered, and that's a, it's an amazing marketplace ministry. If you want to find out more about it, you can Google it. Yeah, Google it in Destin, uh, Business Empowered. Um, but um, I saw this couple, and they had miraculously prospered through the downturn that everybody else was experiencing. It was, it was amazing. They just did business God's way, and God blessed them, and they increased, and it was an amazing thing. And so I saw them across the room, and I waved at them. I said, hey. And as soon as I waved at them, the Lord spoke in my ear and said, go over there and break a spirit of robbery off of them. And I went, robbery? Lord, don't you know what's going on? I mean, they're doing really good. I mean, they're, they're really, I mean, they're blessed. I mean, we've been bragging on them, and this really, it's, the Lord, you know how the Lord said to me? He's, he went, shh. Just go do it. <laughs> Sometimes we think we know more than God. Oh, yes, okay, yes, sir, yes. So I went over there, and I just hugged him and visited with him for a minute. I said, listen, the Lord told me to come over here and break a spirit of robbery off of you. And she looked at him, and he looked at her, and she went, oh, my gosh, is that what's going on? And she started to cry, and she was like, listen. She's like, we have been through hell the last five weeks. They're in real estate. She said, listen, every time we've come to the closing table, something has happened. We've been in business for 30 years. We know how to do business, but something has happened to sabotage our deals right at the last minute, and we've lost over $5 million in deals in the last five weeks. I said, well, the Lord said it's a spirit of robbery. Exodus 22.7 says, if you catch a thief, he must restore double. There's another one that says if you catch a thief, he's got to restore sevenfold. As a matter of fact, Robert Gay, after, um, after Hurricane Michael, he studied out that word restore, and it's not the word shalom, it's the word shalam. Bam, shalam, okay? It's probably pronounced shalom, but shalam sounds a lot better, right? And so, yeah, it's, and so honestly, in one of the scriptures it says, so if somebody steals a lamb, 
they must restore seven lambs. And my husband turned to me and said, that's what you call a shalama lamb. Okay, so, all right, so <laughs> shalam doesn't just mean restore, doesn't mean just give back, but listen to what it means. It means to restore more than before and to restore better than before. How many can think of a few things that now all of a sudden this little light bulb is going on and you're going, you know what? I got robbed. And so we prayed for them, and she called me back five weeks later, and she says, okay, let me tell you what happened. She said, we took authority over that spirit of robbery that day, and since that time, we've closed deal after deal after deal. We closed $11 million in deals in the last five weeks, more than double what they had lost. Come on, can we give the Lord a hand for that, amen? I'm, I'm telling you true stories, okay? And so... During that time, I had this vision. We were in morning prayer, and I had, um, I had this vision of a boxing ring. Ring, right? Ring or rink. I always get confused. Boxing rink, ring. Okay. Not a skating rink, a, a boxing ring, okay? And there were two evil beings in this boxing ring. And one of them I knew was called the devourer. And one of them was called the destroyer. They were not fighting each other. They were looking for an opponent. And they were dancing around all proud in the middle of this ring. And this is in, in prayer, and I'm just seeing this whole thing. They're dancing around, and everybody that's watching them are, are church people. They're people like us. And they're just sitting there looking at the devourer and the destroyer. And he, and he was kind of doing like what Goliath did. Who will come fight me? Who will come fight me? And nobody would get in there. And I was like, why doesn't somebody get in there and knock their heads off and make them be quiet? Because they were like mocking the church. And I couldn't understand why nobody would move. Until, you know how when um, boxers come out and they've got that robe on their back? You know, and they've just got what it usually says their name on it or something. And instead of their names on the back of their robes, it said this. This is just life. Devouring, destroying this is just life. This is just what happens when you get older. Your body starts to break down. You start to get sick. This is just what happens in a hard economy. You lose your money. You lose your, your authority. You lose your influence. This is just what happens when you send your kids to high school or to college. They go off into rebellion. They do, do, do. This is just life. Can you see how the enemy came in and robbed from us? And we didn't even know we were being robbed. And I heard the voice of the Lord say, this is not just life. Take authority and take back what the enemy has stolen. 